We naturally feel upbeat when we eat healthy, exercise regularly and sleep well. But it works the other way around too. The mind and body both impact each other. How does that help? Being happy can motivate us to follow a healthy lifestyle. What are the healthy habits that joyous people tend to adopt? If you wish to be a healthier person, one of the first starting points is to start thinking healthful thoughts. How does that help? There is an expectancy theory. Has it ever happened to you that you were suffering from a sore throat and you visited the doctor? When he asked you to open your mouth, he said, there are no symptoms and you realized that the throat had been cured. What happened in this case? Your mind expected certain results because you were visiting the doctor and those results actually came true. Based on this, Dr. Marcel Kilsborn of New York formulated the expectancy theory. She said, when our intellect is convinced about something going to happen, the brain fires neurons in accordance with our expectation and that results in the body healing itself. To prove this expectancy theory, there was an experiment conducted by Dr. Fabrizio Benedetti and his associates on thoracic surgery patients. Thoracic surgery is a very invasive procedure where the back muscles are slit for the doctors to be able to reach the heart and lungs. Post the surgery, the patient experiences tremendous pain. Now these doctors, for half the patients, they would arrive by the bedside and say, Oh my, you are experiencing pain. Nurse, add morphine to the IV tube. In the second half, the patients would have the morphine added without their awareness of it. And the consequence, in the case of the patients who were aware they were being given the painkiller, the impact was far more than those who were unaware of it. What had worked was the expectation in their own minds. This is a case of mind over matter. That leads to a very important conclusion. We have this mindset. If I can only become a healthier person, I can then be happy. So we postpone our happiness until our health improves. And if it does not, we remain miserable. I would like you to switch that proposition and think if I can be a happier person, I will naturally gravitate towards better health as well. And this was proved amply in an extensive experiment conducted in recent times by Stanford Mind Body Lab principal researcher Dr. Alia Crum along with psychology professor from Harvard Ellen Langer. They did this study in 17 hotels. They would gather the hotel maids and explain to them the importance of doing exercise in middle age for keeping old age at bay. They would then ask the hotel maids, are you doing exercise on a regular basis? All of them would invariably shrug. Ma'am, where do we have the time? Later, the maids would be split 
into two and half of them would be informed how their daily work involved so many of the essential exercises for good health whether it was mopping lifting rugs cleaning or whatever their physicals were measured in the beginning of the experiment and the researchers returned after three months. They discovered that the second group who were made aware of the physical benefits of their works had become far healthier. Their BMI body mass index had improved, their cholesterol had decreased, their sugar levels had decreased merely by their change in mindset. So, this is a very tangible benefit of happiness in its link with health. Now, listen to a second benefit. Happier people naturally follow more wholesome lifestyles. Here is what my latest book, The Art and Science of Happiness, says about it. We naturally feel upbeat when we eat healthy exercise regularly and sleep well but it works the other way around too being happy can motivate us to follow a healthy lifestyle what are the healthy habits that joyous people tend to adopt the mind and body both impact each other the food people eat influences their nature and the reverse, those with pure mind prefer pure foods is also true. They gravitate towards a sattvic diet, foods in the mode of goodness. Great luminaries such as Mahatma Gandhi, Bertrand Russell, Leo Tolstoy, Leonardo da Vinci, Pythagoras, George Bernard Shaw, Thomas Edison and Benjamin Franklin all had one thing in common. They were vegetarian. Their sattvic thoughts naturally made food conducive to high thinking, which is sattvic food attractive to them. Now, one more powerful reason why you will benefit from mastering the art of happiness. It will make you more successful and effective in your work. An experiment was done with little children. They were given block puzzles to solve and later on they were made happier through lollipops and given the same puzzles to solve. It was found their creativity had been unleashed because of the happy mood. And the same happened to doctors. They are given symptoms and asked to diagnose. Later on, when they were in a happier frame, again, the same game was played with them. It was discovered that they were making far more accurate diagnosis. Now you will laugh on hearing how these doctors were made happier in the experiment merely by placing candy in front of them. The mind had this, oh, this candy, this chance for happiness there. And that had unleashed the creativity of the doctors. Now look, when you visit a doctor, they have sweets, lollipops for the patients. But I feel we must also have lollipops for the doctors themselves. And this has an important corollary for medical institutions. It is so important to keep their staff happy so that they perform better. For all these reasons, health, better lifestyle, better at work, we realize it is worth our time learning the art and science of happiness. First of all, we will discuss why we have not achieved happiness so far and then we'll delve into the tools and techniques on creating it within ourselves.